and that's going to give us uh, c over v equals lambda over lambda n. Now what's c over v? That's n. That's our index of uh, refractions. That tells us that n is lambda over lambda n. So here's what we need. This tells us how much the wavelength has decreased in the new medium. This tells us how much the wavelength has decreased in the new medium. medium. Just like n tells us how much the speed has decreased in the new medium, n tells us how much the wavelength has decreased in the new medium. Remember that n is always bigger than 1, so the new wavelength is always going to be smaller than the old wavelength. So this is the key equation that we need right here. Uh, the new speed is going to be decreased by a factor of n versus the vacuum. And the new wavelength is going to be decreased by a factor of n uh, versus the old wavelength. So what I forgot in the equation here is um, when we're moving through the film, when we're moving through the film, we don't have a wavelength of lambda. When we're in the film, our wavelength is this new wavelength because we're in the film, which is smaller than the old wavelength. We have to divide that by n. So over here, I should not have been putting in lambda. I should have been putting in the new wavelength. which is lambda over n. Okay, so this is something you have to do anytime you're working with a thin film. Anytime you're working with a thin film, um, you have to work with the wavelength in the film, which is the original wavelength decreased by n. All right, so that gives us our new equation over here. We'll get some practice with this, so we'll, we'll see easier how to work with it. All right, and now, we can try the problem in the book, number 39. Now, who does that n refer to? Who has the index of n? Uh, is it the uh, is it film? Right. So it's good that you wrote that down, but maybe it would be better to write that down here so that we remember it's referring to this film. Okay. Now, to me, this question is kind of uh, ambiguous. Because I would appear, uh, I would think that you would get uh, a bunch of different colors here. But I think, like I said, what they're asking for here is the longest wavelength color that will appear. I think they're really asking us for the longest wavelength color. Okay. If you feel stuck, we can go through it together. Yeah, I am. Okay. Just by the word. So we have a soap bubble that is 120 uh, millimeters thick. Uh, nanometers. Nanometers, thanks. 120 nanometers. Uh, so actually, of course, the soap bubble doesn't really look like this. The soap bubble really looks, it would be a bubble. It would be circular. And they're just talking about the thickness here, the 120 nanometers. That's what they meant when they said, what color will appear at the center, I guess. Um, so there would be different thicknesses over here. That's an important point that I didn't mention before. I said before that sometimes D is constant, but actually many films have different thicknesses at different places. And since there's different thicknesses at different places, 
Um, different places will have different colors of light that give bright spots. Um, at the thickest portion, there might be one color that gives the bright spot, whereas um, at a, a different thickness, there might be a different color that gives the bright spot. That's one reason, again, why um, you can get a whole uh, array of colors when you look at a thin film and when you look at it from different angles. Okay, so anyway, um, they're basically asking us for the color of the center, so they're looking for the widest distance. I'm still going to use this uh, picture here, but, but what we have to remember this is just we're looking at the center portion. All right, they're asking what color will appear at the center. Now, the color that appears is the color that had the constructive interference. The colors that won't appear are the ones that experience the destructive interference. We know there's a lot of colors that are going to get canceled out by destructive interference. We want the ones that are giving us bright spots and constructive interference. So they're telling us to use this equation over here. Now, like I said, it seems to me like there will be many different wavelengths that will work here. Um, however, um, I think that we should start by finding the longest wavelength here. Um, so, well, let's start with uh, m equals zero, say, and see what we get. So, plugging into this equation, 2g equals m plus one half. So here's our equation that we worked so hard to get. Um, so do we have? Uh, so what, first of all, we should always write down a question mark that tells us what the question is. So what's this question asking us for? What's going to be the most uh, strongly reflected wavelength? Yeah, and what, so what would be a good symbol for what the question is asking us for? What's the symbol for the concept that they're asking us for? Lambda. Yeah, lambda. I don't think they actually mentioned wavelength, but they asked what color will appear. Uh, and we know that that's represented by a uh, wavelength. Or maybe your addition is different than mine. Yeah, what wavelength? Oh, I should uh, not assume there. So mine, so uh, well, let's try the same problem. What wavelength is most strongly reflected at the center of the outer surface? Yeah, so yours is a little bit improved than mine. They put in some more details. Okay, that's the basic idea. All right, so they're definitely going for lambda here. All right, well, we're not going to plug in for lambda then. Do we have anything else we can plug in here? Any other numbers that we know that we can plug in? Yes, we can plug in for D. So what do we want to do, conversion on that? Or well, um, the key for this type of formula, um, it's, it's good that you're thinking of that. We do not have to use standard SI units. We just have to be consistent. Whatever units we use for D, we have to use the same units for lambda. Um, do you know what are the units that are usually most? The same unit. Yeah, <laughs> nanometers. Nanometers are usually the most convenient. So actually, even though you could, we might as well stick with the nanometers here. They did us a favor. But it's good that you were thinking about that. So let's stick with that. So that would give us two times 120. As usual, I'm not going to write the units in the formula. Um, all right, any other numbers that we know that we can plug in? Um, we can plug in for n. Yeah, definitely. So let's plug in n is 1.34. All right, and like I said, m could take on many different values. Let's try plugging in 0 for now. Let's try plugging in 0 for m, and then what would we do? 